Welcome back students. In the previous video, we have discussed about a pre-malignant condition that is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Now in this video, let's discuss about cervical cancer. Now let's start from the basics. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological cancer in the world and also in Indian women. Please note this point. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological cancer or genital cancer in the world and also in the Indian women. But if someone asks you what is the most common cancer in the women in world? See, this is the order of cancers worldwide. The most common cancer is a breast cancer followed by colorectal, lung and cervical cancer. So, I can say cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women among the world. But if I am talking about the genital cancers, then cervical cancer will be in the first place. So, please try to understand that cervical cancer is the most common genital or gynecological cancer, but not overall. Overall, breast cancer is the most common cancer. Now, what is the most common cancer of women in India? If I am talking about specific in India, then the answer will be again breast cancer. Okay. Here also most common cancer of women in India is again breast cancer. Now, fourth most common cancer in women worldwide. I have said you most common cancer among women worldwide is breast. Fourth most common is cervical cancer. Okay. Most common cause of dash in Indian women. Cervical cancer is the most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding. Okay. So, please note this point. Cervical cancer is not only the most common gynecological cancer, but the same cervical cancer is the most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding in Indian women. And it is also the most common cause of pyometra. Okay. So, please note these two important points. It is the most common cause of postmenopausal bleeding as well as the pyometra. What is the most common histological variant? See, in the previous video, I have said that the cervical cancer, you can have two different types of cervical cancers. Most common being squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Okay, so most common histological variant is the squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix and adenocarcinoma can also exist. But what is the most common site of adenocarcinoma? The most common site of adenocarcinoma is endocervix. Okay, so these are all one liner kind of things which you need to keep in your mind. Okay, having said that, let's see some important risk factors. Guys, I don't want to go in detail about all these risk factors again. Why? Because we have already discussed all these risk factors in the previous video itself. Okay, see these risk factors which I am showing you right now, they are not only the risk factors for the cervical cancer, but they are also the predisposing factors for the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So, there we have discussed in detail about all these risk factors. Now, I am skipping this part. Now, what are the symptoms? If the woman is having a cervical cancer, what kind of symptoms does she have? She will be having a bleeding per vaginum or irregular bleeding. Irregular vaginal bleeding is the most common cause. If she is having cervical cancer means, then she will be having abnormal vaginal bleeding. But, what is the most specific? The most specific symptom is postcoital bleeding. Guys, this is the very, very important MCQ. Postcoital bleeding, you have to think about cervical cancer. But here itself, I want to take a bit more time. Postcoital bleeding is the most specific symptom of the cervical cancer. Okay, there is no doubt. But you also have to think about the differential diagnosis. That is, Postcoital bleeding can also be seen in the conditions of cervical polyps. It can also be seen with the uterine prolapse. See, the moment there is a uterine prolapse, because of the congestion of the region of the cervix, there can be a decubitus ulcer. And that decubitus ulcer can bleed and use rise to pain. So, cervical polyps, uterine polyps. If there is cervicitis because of gonorrheal infection. Ectropion, during pregnancy, I have said, there will be outward projection of the endocervix. That, that, 
that is known as ectropion okay so even with ectropion a female can have a post coital bleeding and during menopause so as during menopause what happens there is decrease in the levels of estrogens and that cause vaginal atrophy and that can lead to post coital bleeding so these are all the differential diagnosis for the post coital bleeding at the end of the day what i want you to remember most common symptom is abnormal vaginal bleeding that is irregular vaginal bleeding is the most common thing and most specific is the post coital bleeding now you can expect a offensive vaginal discharge there can be a deep pelvic pain but once the disease is completely established you can have a four cardinal signs this is important mcq what are the four cardinal signs which can be seen with the cervical cancer it is hardness friability fixated and bleeds on touch see this cervical cancer like you know if you are trying to do vaginal examination and when you are touching this cervix it easily bleeds on touch why because it is easily friable it is so delicate kind of thing when you are trying to do the examination it bleeds and it is a fixated and you can see hardness also so what you have to remember are these four cardinal signs fixated hardness friability bleeds on touch most specific is post coital bleeding most common is irregular vaginal bleeding okay continue with the complications what kind of complications a female will have if she is having cervical cancer the mnemonic which i used to remember is fund f u n d having cervical cancer can lead to formation of abnormal connection between the cavities that is fistula formation so what kind of fistulas you can expect in a female who is having the cervical cancer vesico vaginal fistulas means an abnormal connection between urinary bladder and vagina see this is a cancer right it is expanding when it is expanding it is going to cause pressure on the surrounding regions that pressure can decrease the blood supply to the surrounding regions and that decrease in blood supply will cause ischemia necrosis of the surrounding tissues so because of this necrosis there can be an abnormal connection between the body cavities cancer spreading shows pressure on the surrounding regions that pressure mechanical pressure will cause the necrosis of the surrounding regions that will cause abnormal cavity or abnormal connection between the body cavities so cervical cancer can cause fistula formation what kind of fistulas vesico vaginal fistulas or vesico cervical fistula or recto vaginal fistulas can also be possible so these are the complications now see this cervical cancer it can metastasize and it can involve the parametrium ureters kidneys so that can kidney involvement can cause nephrosis and uremia and also please remember that this renal failure kidney involvement in cervical cancer renal failure with the uremia is the most common cause of death if someone ask you what is the most common cause of death in a patient with cervical cancer it's the kidney involvement uremia okay so u for uremia n for nephrosis that is hydronephrosis or you can expect a pyonephrosis and that can lead to death these are the complications of a cervical cancer now what is the management of the cervical cancer see the management depends on the stage of the cervical cancer guys from this slide it is utmost important if they are asking you a question from cervical cancer that would be definitely from the management stages okay so what is the cervical cancer management first important point see this slide is totally about the rules of the game okay all these are the rules on which we are going to do the management or on which we will play the game of the management of cervical cancer see what are the rules radiotherapy can be used in all the stages of cervical cancer for all stages of cervical cancer stage 1 2 3 4 you can do the radiotherapy radiotherapy is good okay 
But when we are discussing in detail about stage wise management, we will see from where exactly you are starting the radiotherapy. Okay, but it can be done for any stage. So, if you are trying to do the radiotherapy, you should give a radio sensitizer so that there will be more receptivity of this radiation. So, what is a radio sensitizer used in the cancer cervix is cisplatin. Okay, this is the MCQ. Cisplatin is the radio sensitizer. Now, see. If the tumor size is more than 2 centimeters, if the cervical cancer size is more than 2 centimeters, don't even think about trying to conserve the fertility of the patient. Usually, see the management of cervical cancer depends on whether the female is desiring of future fertility or not. See, the rule, see we are not discussing the, like you know, the exact management. These are all the rules. We will discuss the management in detail. Again, I am repeating. Don't worry. If the tumor size is more than 2 centimeters, don't think about conserving the fertility of the patient. But if the size is greater than 4 centimeters, means don't even think about surgery as an option. See, if the size of the cancer is more than 4 centimeters, means don't Think about surgery. Don't plan for the surgery. If the size is greater than 2 cm means don't try to conserve the fertility. Now see the stage and the treatment. Here also please guys this is a general idea. Okay. For example if the stage is present between 1 to 2A1. You don't know what exactly is 1 stage 1 and you don't know what exactly is 2A1. Don't worry. I am just saying generally. If the stage is between 1 to 2A1, you can go with the radical hysterectomy. You can do radical hysterectomy. If the stage is between 1B3 and stage 4, you can do a chemo radiation. Okay, well and good. Guys, some important MCQ points which you have to keep in mind are, see, the staging, how we are going to do the staging in cervical cancer. See, all cancers in gynae are staged surgically. Except, except cervical cancer, all gynecological cancers in gynae are staged surgical means first of all we will do the surgery, we will remove the tissues, we will see whether there is extension or not based on that we are going to do the staging in all the other cancers like you know endometrial cancer, uterine cancer, vaginal cancer, whatever. All cancers are staged surgically, not the cervical cancer. But now these days, this is important, this is a new addition. But like you know, we are doing the clinical staging. But now surgical staging and radiological evaluation, surgical and radiological evaluation are also a part of assigning the stage. Initially what we are doing, we are just doing the clinical staging. Clinical staging include physical examination, biopsy and different types of like CT, PET, that and all. Now, Along with the clinical staging, you also have to consider the radiological and surgical evaluation also to assign the stage of cervical cancer. Okay, well and good. Out of all the radiological evaluation, PET scan is more useful. Now, what we have seen in this slide guys, radiotherapy can be used for all the stages of cancer. Radiotherapy is good. Okay, the radio sensitizer is cisplatin. If the cancer size, if the cancer size is greater than 2 centimeters, don't try to conserve the fertility of the patient. If the tumor size is greater than 4 centimeters, don't even think about the surgery. If the cancer stage is between 1 and 2A1, you can do the radical hysterectomy. This is a general thing, but not in specific. If the stage is between 1B3 and stage 4, you can do chemo radiation. Okay. But from now, please be more attentive. We are going to assigning the stage of the cervical cancer, which is very, very important. Now, let's see the staging of the cervical cancer. See, stage 1. Very simple. In stage 1, the cancer, the cancer is strictly confined to the cervix. Means the cancer is nowhere. Only in the cervix. Now, in this stage 1, we are having a and B. These are the substages. See, 1A, in 1A, the cancer 
is a very very small you can only diagnose this cancer by microscopy it's a very it's such a small cancer you can only see this cancer via microscopically now see the depth of invasion is less than 5 mm okay now less than 5 mm means is it less than 2 cm 2 mm 3 mm or 4 mm based on that the 1a was further divided into 1a1 1a2 see it's a microscopic cancer only but see if the depth of invasion is less than 3 mm it is 1a1 if the depth of invasion is more than 3 mm but less than 5 mm means it is 1a2 so 1a 1a the depth of invasion is less than 5 mm 1a1 less than 3 1a2 more than 3 mm but less than 5 mm Okay, well and good. Now, what about 1B? Now, 1B means the depth of invasion is more, the cancer is invading more than 5 millimeters. That's what I mean by. So, the depth of invasion is greater than 5 millimeters, but still the cancer is only localized to the cervix because it's a stage 1. In stage 1, the cervix, the cervical cancer is strictly confined to the cervix itself. It's nowhere going, it's not going to vagina, it's not going to parametrium, it's not going to pelvic side wall and there is no distant metastasis, okay. Now, the 1B was further divided into 1B1, 1B2 and 1B3. See, in 1B1, the depth of invasion is greater than 5 mm, okay. But in addition to that, the size, the size of the tumor is less than 2 cm, Okay, in the greatest dimension, the cancer size is less than 2 cm, but it, it is invading more than 5 mm in depth into stroma. So, stromal invasion is greater than 5 mm, but the tumor size is less than 2 cm. That's what I mean by stage 1B1. Now, 1B2 means, now see, invasive carcinoma the size, the size of the cancer is now getting more than 2 centimeters, but it is less than 4 centimeters, more than 2, less than 4. Now, from here, see, 1B2, 1B2, what is that important point? 1B2, now the cancer size is getting more than 2 centimeters. What is that important point you have to keep in mind, guys? Once if the cancer size is greater than 2 centimeters, don't even think about the fertility. Don't try to do a surgery which preserves her fertility for the future. That's what I have said. Okay, again we will discuss. Don't worry. Now 1B3. The cancer size is greater than 4 cm in the greatest dimension. More big size. Now once if it crosses more than 4 cm, it means don't even think about the surgery at all. Okay, we are not doing the surgeries. Okay, that's not helpful. Doing a surgery is not of much beneficial use. Okay. So, stage 1 is completed. Now, stage 2. What are the important points about the stage 2? Now, cancer is spreading to the vagina. This is what happening in the stage 2. Carcinoma invades beyond the uterus. Beyond the uterus, but not extending onto the lower one-third of the vagina or to the pelvic wall. What does I mean by? See, here there is spreading of the cancer. But where not it is spreading, it is not spreading to lower one third of the vagina or to the pelvic wall. It is not spreading to lower one third of the vagina or it is not spreading to the pelvic wall. But it is spreading to upper two thirds of the vagina. This is important. Okay. So, please concentrate guys. In 2A, in 2A please concentrate. Involvement is limited to the upper two thirds of the vagina without parametrium being involved. There is no parametrial involvement, but the upper two-third of the vagina is getting involved. Stage 1, cervix only. Okay, the cancer is localized only to the cervix. Here I want to say one important point. Please concentrate in the top. See, the extension of cancer to the uterus doesn't determine the staging. Okay, so the uterine involvement doesn't have any significance. Please keep this point in mind. Now, let's come back. 2A. The cancer is spreading to the upper two-thirds of the vagina without the parametrial involvement. But here, a very, very important point. Please concentrate in 1A1. 
okay to like such not 1a1 2a1 see 2a was further divided into 2a1 and 2a2 the cancer size is less than 4 cm in dimension you can ask me sir in 1b3 you have said that the cancer size is greater than 4 cm and now in 2a1 you are saying that the cancer size is less than 4 cm how can this be possible guys the staging depends on the involvement what does i mean by it doesn't matter whatever is the size once if the upper two third vagina is involved it is stage 2 that's it if once the upper two third of the vagina is getting involved the stage 1 will be converted into stage 2 size is not important size of the tumor is not the criteria here upper two third of the vagina involvement we are coming into stage 2 now here in stage 2 we will see what is the size of the tumor if the size of the tumor is less than 4 cm it is 1a1 if the size of the tumor is greater than 4 cm it is 2a2 okay again i am repeating we are only considering whether the upper two third of the vagina is involved or not if it is involved we are into second stage okay now if the tumor size is less than 4 cm means 2a1 more than 4 cm means 2a2 now what is 2b guys 2a what is that important point only upper two third of the vagina is involved involved but no parametrium but here in 2b along with the upper two third of the vaginal involvement parametrium is also getting involved parametrial involvement but still the cancer is not reaching to the pelvic side walls okay still the cancer is localized to vagina and parametrium is now being involved in the stage 2b let's move forward guys here please also remember can we consider a fertility sparing surgery for stage 2a2 don't even think about it why because if the tumor size is greater than 2 cm no fertility sparing surgery now at least can i consider a surgery as an option for stage 2a2 don't even think about that if the tumor size is greater than 4 cm we are not going to do the surgery now what about stage 2a1 in stage 2a1 if a female is having a cervical cancer of stage 2a1 shall i have to consider a fertility sparing surgery see here the cancer size is less than 4 cm now less than 4 cm means it can also be less than 2 cm if it is less than 2 cm i will be considering a fertility sparing surgery if it is more than 2 cm means no i won't do but can i consider surgery as a treatment option for stage 2a1 i can do why because here the size of the tumor is less than 4 cm so i can consider surgery as a treatment option now let's see stage 3 and stage 4 guys in stage 1 cancer only to the cervix uterine involvement doesn't determine the staging of the cervical cancer in stage 2 cancer is getting spreading from the cervix to the upper two third of the vagina with the parametrial involvement also but no pelvic side wall involvement now in stage 3 this is what important is happening now pelvic side walls okay pelvic the cancer is extending to the pelvic side wall as well as the lower the lower one third of the vagina is getting involved lower one third of the vagina and pelvic side walls are getting involved see when the cancer is spreading from please concentrate here this is the cervix imagine that this is the cervix and the top you are going to have the uterus something like this simple here is the pelvic side wall okay these are the pelvic side walls surrounding is the parametrium you will be having the broad ligament and all that that region is known as the parametrium what and all i am showing you here is the uterus this is the cervix and this is the pelvic side walls now when the cancer is spreading from the cervix to the pelvic side walls definitely the structures which are present in between will be definitely affected we know that in the parametrium there is ureter passing so definitely in stage 3 the ureters are being involved 
So when the ureters are being involved, you can expect hydronephrosis in the patient. Okay. So kidney is not involved. So there is no distant metastasis to kidney. There is no direct extension to the kidneys. But you can expect hydronephrosis even in the stage 3. Why? Because when the cancer is spreading from the cervix to the pelvic side walls, in the parametrium, the ureters are there and these ureters will be like, you know, uh, compressed that will cause hydronephrosis. Okay, well and good. See, there is hydronephrosis or non-functioning bit non-functioning kidney right? because whenever there is hydronephrosis that increases the pressure inside the kidneys that decreases the GFR so that can be a non-functional non kidney okay well and good and even in the same stage 3 para aortic and pelvic lymph nodes are also involved so what are all the important points you need to keep in mind regarding stage 3 lower one third of the vagina is involved pelvic side walls are getting involved hydronephrosis and non-functional kidney kidney can be there and also lymph nodal involvement. Which lymph nodes guys? Pelvic and para-aortic lymph nodes are getting involved. Now let's see the substages in the stage 3. See 3 was divided into 3A, 3B and 3C. Now 3C was further divided into C1 and C2. This is a new classification which is very very important. Now let's start from 3A, 3B, 3C. In 3A, only the lower one third of the vagina is involved. Okay, out of all all the things which are present in 3, out of all the things which are present in stage 3, what are all the things? I have said, where one third of the vagina, pelvic side wall involvement, hydronephrosis, pelvic and paraiotic lymph nodes. Out of all, lower one third of the vaginal involvement is there, but there is no extension to the pelvic side wall. If once the pelvic side walls are getting involved, the staging will be 3B. Okay, see, extension to pelvic wall. Once the pelvic wall is involvement, definitely the ureters will be affected. So, there is hydronephrosis and non-functioning kidney. 3A, lower one third of the vagina. 3B, pelvic side walls, hydronephrosis, non-functioning kidney. Now, 3C. Now, 3C, the lymph nodes are getting involved. Which lymph nodes? If it is, if it is pelvic lymph nodes... Then it is 3C1. If it is only pelvic lymph nodes, it is 3C1. If paraiotic lymph nodes are getting involved, means it is 3C2. The moment paraiotic lymph nodes are involved, it is 3C2. If it is only pelvic lymph nodes, it is 3C1. So, third stage is also completed. Now, fourth stage is very, very easy. Now, in stage 4, the cancer is spreading to the distant organs. Distant metastasis is now seen in stage 4. If it is only to the adjacent organs, bowel, bladder, rectum and all, if it is spreading to the adjacent pelvic organs, it is 4A. If it is the, to the distant organs like lungs, liver, then it is 4B. Spread to distant organs is 4B. But to the surrounding organs, adjacent organs, it is 4A. So, this is in detail staging about the cervical cancer. I know I am repeating, but if you can get a question, definitely that question will be from the staging and management. Stage 1, only cervical involvement. Stage 2, vaginal involvement, that is the upper two-third of the vaginal involvement with the parametrial involvement. Stage 3, lower one-third of the vaginal involvement, pelvic side wall involvement, hydronephrosis Hydroureters, non-functioning kidneys. Stage 4. Okay, stage 3, pelvic and paraiotic lymph nodes are also affected. And stage 4, distant metastasis. Okay, metastasis to adjacent organs or even to the distant organs like lungs. Now, let's see the treatment based on the staging. Okay, so what is the management of cervical cancer? Please be attentive that if it is stage 1A1, 1A1, stage 1, that to stage 1A1. See, in stage 1A1, it is very clear that the cancer's involvement, the stromal invasion, stromal invasion is less than 3 millimeters. So, how can you say that in stage 1A1, the stromal involvement is less than 3 millimeters? Let me prove you. Please concentrate here. In stage 1A1, the stromal involvement is less than 3 millimeters. That's what. 
if it is stage 1 even if the female family is not completed she is desiring of future pregnancy then what is the management if her family is completed means what is the management the management is absolutely different based on the fertility like you know future desiring for the fertility now please concentrate guys here in 1a1 i just want to add a few more points it is 3 mm stromal invasion only but if there is no lymphovascular space invasion means lvsi lymphovascular space means like you no know, like you know the lymphatics and the blood vessels if they are not involved means it's very good then if she is willing to have a pregnancy means you can just do the coniization in the topic of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia i have said that the coniization or cone biopsy is a diagnostic but it can also be used for the therapeutic use see stage 1a1 it's a micro carcinoma micro invasive carcinoma for treating stage 1a1 you can use the cone biopsy that's what i am doing here coniization can be done but once if the lymphovascular space invasion is there means still it is less than 3 mm still it is microscopic cancer stage 1a1 but if the lymphovascular spaces are involved means you can do the radical tracheolectomy what does it mean by radical tracheolectomy radical tracheolectomy means removing only the cervix okay removing the cervix with the parametrial tissues cervix is removed parametrial tissues are removed then what we will be doing will be connecting the uterus with the vagina uterus and vagina will be stitched they are connected the cervix we have removed so that's what is radical tracheolectomy is that fertility sparing surgery radical tracheolectomy is a fertility sparing surgery very very important mcq that's the reason why we are doing it in a female who wants to have a future pregnancy what if the family is completed if her family is completed do the hysterectomy extrafacial hysterectomy if there is no lymphovascular space invasion but if there is also lymphovascular space invasion along with hysterectomy also do lymphadenectomy okay along with the radical hysterectomy do pelvic lymphadenectomy also why because the lymphovascular space is involved okay well and good now what is the treatment for stage 1a2 1a2 means the invasion is more than 3 mm but it is less than 5 mm how can you say sir see in 1a2 1a2 the cancer involvement the cancer invasion into the stroma into the cervical stroma is greater than 3 mm but less than 5 mm now what we have to do sir if it is stage 2a2 if the family is not completed means do the radical tracheolectomy or you can also consider coniization but usually we won't do coniization but that can also be considered do radical tracheolectomy why because it's a fertility sparing surgery if the family is completed no issues at all simply do the modified radical hysterectomy class 2 modified radical hysterectomy don't worry we are having a complete different video on different types of hysterectomy okay different types of hysterectomy is that we will discuss in a different video now see it is class 2 modified radical hysterectomy is the treatment that we are going to do is a surgery that we are going to do for the stage 2a2 in a female who is not willing to have a future pregnancy okay well and good stage 1b1 see here the stromal involvement is more than 5 mm more than 5 mm of the stroma is involved but the cancer size is less than 2 cm now if the here the cancer size is less than 2 cm now what we can do we can do a radical tracheolectomy why we are doing radical tracheolectomy guys here because see here in this condition of stage 1b1 the cancer size is less than 2 cm if the cancer size is less than 2 cm you can conserve her fertility you can spare her fertility okay that is the reason why in a female who have not completed her family you are doing radical tracheolectomy i have already said you radical tracheolectomy is a kind of procedure which preserves her fertility now family completed not an issue at all do class 3 radical hysterectomy 
See guys, stage 1A1, extra facial hysterectomy. Stage 1A2, class 2 modified radical hysterectomy. Stage 1B1, class 3 radical hysterectomy. Now from here, everything is going to be downhill. Everything is going to be very easy from now. Why? Because, see, stage 1B2, in 1B2, the cancer size is greater than 2 centimeters. The size of the cancer is more than 2 centimeters. But it is less than 4 centimeters. If the cancer size is more than 2 centimeters, means don't even think about fertility sparing. So, do radical hysterectomy. The cancer size is more. Oh, now it's very, it's getting more complicated. So, remove her uterus. Class 3 radical hysterectomy. And in a female who is not desiring pregnancy, there also class 3 radical hysterectomy. Here also radical, uh, class 3 radical hysterectomy. And in this place also class 3 radical hysterectomy. 1B3, 1B3. What is the important point here? See, in 1B3, the cancer size is getting more than 4 centimeters. If it is more than 4 centimeters, now what we have to do? Don't even think about the surgery as an option. So, we are not doing any hysterectomies here. Hysterectomy is a surgical procedure. So, we are not doing surgeries. So, we are doing a chemo radiation here as well as chemo radiation here in both the patients. Now, this is a very, very important point and my favorite point. That is stage 2A1. In stage 2A1, See, we are coming to stage 2. Stage 2 means the upper two-third of the vagina is getting involved. Okay, the upper two-third of the vagina. Now here, what about the size of the like, you know, cancer? It doesn't matter whatever is the size. The upper two-third of the vagina is involved, it's 2. Now, we, let's see here. See, 2A1, in 2A1, the size of the cancer, the size of the cancer is less than 4 centimeters. The size of the cancer is less than 4 centimeters. What does I mean by? If it is less than 4 centimeters, it may be less than 3, it may be less than 2 or it may be even less than 1. It doesn't matter about the size. Upper two-third of the vagina is involved, it is 2. Now let's see. If it is less than 4 centimeters, means it can be less than 2 centimeters also. If it is less than 2 centimeters, I can do fertility sparing surgery. So, I can do radical tracheolectomy here. This is the important point. If the size of the cancer is greater than 2 centimeters means, if it is greater than 2 centimeters, again I will be going for the class 3 radical hysterectomy because still it is less than 4 centimeters. I can consider the surgery. So, class 3 radical hysterectomy. If the family is completed, not an issue at all. Very simple. Class 3 radical hysterectomy. Now, stage 2A2. Now, in stage 2A2, what's happening? Please concentrate in 2A2. Again, the cancer size is getting more than 4 cm in the greatest dimension. More than 4 cm means there is no chance for us. More than 4 cm, the only option we are left with is chemo radiation. So, from here, from here, for all the next upcoming stages, we are not going to consider the surgery. What we are going to do is the chemo radiation. As I have said earlier, that radiation can be given in all the stages of CA cervix. Okay. So, it is more than 4 centimeters. Do chemo radiation here? Also here. So, this is the management. So, this is the management for the CA cervix. Okay. Now, the one important point I just want to add here. See, in all these conditions, in all these conditions, you should also have to do the lymphadenectomy. Okay, pelvic lymphadenectomy should also be considered in all these stages. Okay, like, you know, wherever you are doing the surgery, that's what I mean by. So, wherever you are doing the hysterectomy surgeries, there along with the hysterectomy surgeries, you also have to do the pelvic lymphadenectomy. That's what the important point. Please keep that point in mind. I have said radical tracheolectomy is... Fertility sparing surgery. What we are doing here guys? We are removing the cervix. We are joining the uterus with the vagina. Now, when it should be considered? It should only be considered to preserve the pregnancy or to preserve the future fertility if the tumor size is less than 2 cm. I have discussed. Now, she is not having the cervix. In this condition, she can't go for a normal vaginal delivery. Now, 
a female who have undergone post trachelectomy who have undergone the trachelectomy now in her what is the mode of delivery it's a c section very very important so what is radical trachelectomy guys we are removing the cervix and along with that surrounding parametrium and even upper part of the vagina will be removed okay well and good now see we have seen the surgical managements now let's see the radiotherapy see radiotherapy can be given where two ways we can give it by external beam from the external external beam radiotherapy can be given and we can also consider brachytherapy external beam radiotherapy or you can consider brachytherapy so it's a radiotherapy right we have to expose the female for the to the radiation so what are the radiation sources in external beam radiotherapy we are using cesium as a source for the radiation and in brachytherapy we are using iridium as a source of radiation so what exactly is this brachytherapy brachytherapy means we are going to put the source of radiation into the body cavities don't worry i will show you means we are taking the radiation into the body cavities and exposing those neoplastic cells to this radiation so that they will be destroyed now where exactly we will give this brachytherapy brachytherapy like you know we are concentrating this radiation on two certain particular points for example there is a point known as a point a there is an area known as a point a see that's the area where para cervical lymph nodes are present see these para cervical lymph nodes are considered to be the first lymph nodes which are getting affected in cancer cervix they are the first lymph nodes they are the, not the most common lymph nodes they are the first lymph nodes which will be affected in the ca cervix so what we will do here we are going to concentrate the radiation on to this point a in brachytherapy so where exactly this point a is located guys point a is located 2 cm above the external cervical os see this is the external cervical os see from the external cervical os 2 cm above and 2 cm lateral 2 cm lateral from the external cervical os and 2 cm above the external cervical os that's the point where we are having the para cervical lymph nodes so on that point we are going to concentrate the radiation okay so we are going to give a radiation of almost 80 to 90 gray that's the intra cavitary brachytherapy what does it mean by i am going to see i am going to take the radiation source this is the radiation source we are going to take the radiation source into the body and i am going to particularly concentrate on that point okay now please concentrate in this video okay what exactly is happening is you know i am taking the radiation source into the body see this radiation source like you know right, right now it's in the like you know uterus see and now it is emitting the radiation and this radiation will kill the neoplastic cells that the point a okay so this is all about the brachytherapy now after seeing what is brachytherapy now let's see some more important miscellaneous points from a ca cervix so this slide is totally about the different types of hysterectomy that we have already done in the other video now what is the lymphatic supply of the cervix this is something normal 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 this is something anatomical cervix is draining into hope lymph nodes what does it mean by hope lymph nodes see hypogastric obturator para cervical and external iliac lymph nodes are the lymph nodes which are getting the lymphatic drainage from cervix our cervix is draining into these lymph nodes the mnemonic is hope hypogastric obturator para cervical and external iliac okay well and good now let's see some more important points what is the root of spread how this cancer cervix is metastasizing to different different organs the root can be a direct extension lymphatic or hematogenous root why any of these roots it can metastasize to a different organ or to a surrounding area now out of all this what is the most common route of spread it is direct extension okay now what is the most common lymph node which is affected in ca cervix guys please remember there is a lot of controversy over this area 
it used to be said that up to radar lymph nodes are the most common lymph nodes which are affected in ca cervix okay i have said it many times but the recent data is showing that external iliac lymph nodes are more commonly getting affected in ca cervix than the up to radar lymph nodes okay this is a new recent data please keep this point in mind external lymph nodes external iliac lymph nodes are the most common lymph nodes that are being affected in ca cervix okay what is the most common site of hematogenous spread guys see we have seen direct extension lymphatic root hematogenous root if it is a hematogenous root what is the most common site it is lungs okay so lungs are the most common site of hemat lungs are, lungs are the most common site for the hematogenous spread now what is the least common site for the metastasis the least common site for the metastasis is ovaries there is nowhere we have discussed that the cervical cancer is now extending to the ovaries so ovaries are usually spared okay so now when you are doing when you are doing a hysterectomy procedure in a young patient okay you have to do hysterectomy in a young patient now you can have an option to preserve her ovaries because ovaries are the least common sites for the metastasis so ovaries can be spared if you are doing hysterectomy in a young patient right because ovaries are the least common sites for the metastasis okay and most common site for the hematogenous spread is lungs and least common site that is the direct extension least common site for the direct extension is the ovaries okay so all these are the important points again i am saying that please concentrate on the staging and management options for different different stages okay i hope the lecture is helpful thank you